The Valamore Expanse has just came to Old School RuneScape, a brand new area filled with new content and new places to explore, including one of the most anticipated high-tier PVM challenges since the Inferno, the Fortis Coliseum. Which, funnily enough, is not what I'm going to be focused on today, but I will cover in a future video. Today my focus will be on a lesser-known piece of content released, the Perilous Moons Dungeon, which has been described as a med-level dungeon which is heavily inspired by the Barrows, which features three brand new demi-bosses that need to be defeated, and of course, what is any dungeon without a sufficient reward, which I'm very keen to get my hands on. Here we go, the Quetzal. What does that remind me of, a Quetzal? Let's do it. Flying into Valamore. I'm gonna skip through this dialogue. I wanna be one of the first people to complete these dungeons, so we have to run all the way west. We will come back and we will check all of this out in all of its glory, but for now, we're hauling ass. You cross a little bridge. Oh, this place. This looks pretty damn cool. I'm guessing we have to talk to this guy. You do not meet all of the requirements to start at the... Oh my god, no. All right, I'm a noob. Do not run straight here. You have to do the first quest as soon as you land. We gotta go all the way back now. So it turns out that before you can complete the Perilous Moons quest, you have to complete the Twilight's Promise. Wow, this place looks amazing. I'm gonna bond with it. <laughs> yes, very good. The Twilight Promise, 300 quest points. Okay, and now we have one more quest to do to unlock the dungeon. I'm doing this without any guides, so I'm having to read everything. If the inside is anything like the entrance, this place should look pretty badass. A dwarven city, which I'm already preferring to the other dwarven city we have with the massive boats and rivers, which are just tedious and annoying. This is pretty darn cool. What is that? Subscribe. Well, we're fucked. This actually looks so cool. This place looks insane. All right, boys. I'm going into this with no food, limited prayer. All right, I've got somebody here with me. Let's do this together, dude. Where is it? Where's the thing? Attack frozen weapons. What? Do I have to kick it? Oh my god. Okay, it keeps moving. This is so cool. Oh shit, what is this? Light the brazier, light the brazier. I don't have a tinderbox. Wait, hold up. Oh, oh, it doesn't do too much stuff. How am I supposed to light this brazier? Bro. Oh, God, what just happened? That's one down, boys. We got two left to do. I'm hitting like a truck on this guy. Scythe is definitely not hitting as much on this boss as it... Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Moon shield. I don't have my shadow. Barrage it. Am I supposed to be in the moon shield? Let me see. Okay, I was scared of the moon shield, but I shouldn't be. The perilous moon has been completed. I'm going to go bank everything but my melee gear because that seems to be fine. The lunar chest. Can we spoon a unique on the very first opening? A U seed. Bless bone shards. Super compost. Swamp tar. We'll take it. There's a scoreboard here. Global chest count 81. Global deaths 320. There's free exits. It's a little bit confusing. I'm going to go this way because I want to start with the red boss. This guy looks very weak to melee. My hits are really nice. I'm going to look back at this and just laugh at myself. I do not know what I'm supposed to do here. I'm, a, I'm swinging my scythe though. Am I supposed to look at them or away from them? Let's go and loot our first proper chest because I think the first one, it was the quest bosses. So this may be improved or maybe not. <laughs> at the moment, I'm just banking to get more supplies, but apparently you can completely resupply yourself with everything that's inside of this dungeon. But right now, I just want to see if we can get something. This is the blood jaguar. It has to be this one that dies, right? The boss is healing right now, and I don't know why. Which one are we supposed to attack? Oh my god, I'm literally killing myself. I'm dead. What I think was happening with the Jaguars is I think that everybody has their own assigned tiles because I was a little bit confused when I watched it back and I could see the other guy that was in the room with me was taking no damage while being on the opposite side of the room. This is obviously the same for all of us, but when it comes to the Jaguar phase, I think everybody might have their own specific one. It's so nice because it puts you right next to the next boss that you need to kill. Like, you barely need to move. It's so good. It's definitely encouraging me to kill all of the bosses though instead of just killing one let's test this out so i gotta face them okay you just gotta face them and if you face them in time you swing your scythe and i'm not taking any damage here that's cool oh we got something we got the darts i'm guessing this is the same as getting bolt racks 
from the barrows. The regular loot's a little bit underwhelming. I'm guessing the money's gonna be in the uniques and there's quite a few. That is our very first unique that we've had. You have to stand on your own specific tile, the circle. And by standing here, I'm still taking damage, but I'm not taking too much damage. This is the most optimal camera angle to have because otherwise trying to look at them and click any other camera angle, you're kind of gonna miss a couple. So I think it has to be an eagle eye view. If you do this correctly, you can actually avoid taking any damage, which is really nice. We're kc in right now. There's a cap to how many players can go inside the boss. Unable to enter the room because there's too many people inside. Oh, we got in. Somebody died. <laughs> Somebody died. Wipe yourself off, man. You dead. This is really fucking cool, by the way. I really love what they've done here. And I don't know what this is like doing this on like a med level account. This place kind of seems like once you have the mechanics down, you can pretty much avoid taking all damage if you know how to do it exactly which would be really really good for new people getting into pvm oh my god we've killed this so fast we skipped everything we skipped every single one of the phases there we just dps'd it it's a really nice thing i like it i think they've done a good job with this for experimental cases i want to see what this does if i stand in this it hurts you and it heals the boss a fair mechanic what? Wait, why is that one so bad? I felt like I was punished there. I didn't do anything wrong. This moon shield is 100% a Zuck shield simulator. And I am all for updates like this. It's really nice. It teaches the player to stay behind it and also walk alongside it and get the timing down. It's basically conditioning players to go for the Inferno. It's really cool. There's nothing more devastating than getting all the way to Zuck. And then you just get one shot by one of his auto tanks because you can't time the shield. I am going to change things up. Melee clearly works here, but I do want to test out magic and range as well. So I'm going to go change my gear. We're going to try doing some mage. Pretty much everybody in here is either ranging or meleeing for the most part. So this is going to be interesting. This definitely isn't as effective as the scythe. I'm hitting, but I'm not hitting super well. I'm also getting destroyed. Oh my God. That was definitely not the play. I'm going to have to go. Mage is not the way here. Right, I think this phase with Mage will actually be quite nice. Or it won't be nice and my character won't even bother attacking. Mage is a no-go, but we're going to try range now and see how that does. I've got the Twisted Bow and I also have the Blowpipe. I think it's definitely always going to be melee on this boss by the looks of things. I think it's safe to say that melee is the best option. It's a no-go on range and mage for these bosses, but melee, melee is good. Chest 50. They're making us work for this unique. I've got a timer running right now because I want to see how long it takes to kill all three of the bosses, loot the chest, and do a whole circuit. No drop. That's 20kc. And the entire circuit took us bang on five minutes to complete. I think this is chest 21. <laughs> It's never purple. Where is this unique? Everybody stood here with their uniques. I can't get anything. So after a few hours, the stats of the bosses were added to the wiki. And as you can see, my hunch that range and mage wasn't very good here turned out to be quite the case. And something really cool is that each boss is weak to a different melee type. The blood moon is weak to slash, blue moon is weak to crush, and the eclipse moon is weak to stab, which makes a lot of sense now considering I could feel the difference at the time. One thing to note on the mirror face on the eclipse the attack speed of the weapon doesn't matter and the scythe will only hit one damage splat i think this boss is probably the easiest to kill if you get that phase in the middle you just get free dps you just stand there and whack it with the bgs and there's like no risk at all kc 30 dude i'm just not getting lucky man this is basically frogger we've been logged in now for six hours i'm about to be nerd logged put me out of my misery just give me something. Finally! It took 39 KC. We have the duel. I don't know how to say this. The duel machetes. Look at these things. We have found something. That's really fun though. Honestly, like if I was an Iron Man, I would 100% be grinding this content to try and get the full sets. Here is all of the loot that we managed to get from 39 KC just under five mil i want to take a look at something because i am really curious i've been seeing a lot of people that have been getting weapons i've not seen a single person yet who has got any of the armor i'm just gonna call it the machetes because there's no chance i'm gonna pronounce this right there are a couple hundred that have been selling and then we have the blood moon chest plate and there have been barely 
any of these selling. The tacits, there's only been two sells, and one was for 67 mil. And the helmet that I just picked up, there's also been very few sells for it. I don't know how the drop mechanic works in the dungeon, but it seems like the armor pieces, there are very few of them. They don't buy for 50 mil. We've got some offers in the Grand Exchange. The Blood Moon Tacits have only traded hands twice through the Grand Exchange. Oh my god, I got it! 140 mil, I have been waiting for these to buy. Last sold 60 mil four hours ago. We now have the entire set of Blood Moon and I need to go and test this out before they plummet in price. We have 158 crush with everything taken off, 121 crush from the weapons, and then with the full set, we obviously get the bonus. And the set bonus is a Blood Rager. Have a 33% chance of reducing the delay of your next attack by one tick, and we gain the Blood Infusion special attack. <laughs> Well, that's a little underwhelming for a uh, hundred and whatever mil I paid. <laughs> we hit 50s. And then the special attack. Let's see this. I take damage when this happens. Okay, let's go and test it for real. I feel like the bear helmet probably looks a bit more badass. I think the best place to test it is going to be straight back at the content it was designed for. It would only make sense for us to test this outfit out at the boss, which is weak to crush. The blue moon. All right. It's 26, 27, okay. I don't have a lot of defense, so I'm getting smoked right now. We almost won down it. I don't think this is going to be good at the other two bosses at all. It was not. I am going straight back to the Grand Exchange, and I'm throwing this back in there. Before I go and sell this armor, I want to very quickly just go and see what the XP rates are per hour. But as soon as that's done, it's going straight back in the Grand Exchange. Been here now bashing away for a good couple minutes. The XP per hour that we're getting right now is 140,000 XP, which actually doesn't seem too bad, which I believe is better XP per hour than using Obsidian, but not as good as using full DH. And I did end up testing it with the Torva and the Serpentine Helm just to see what the XP difference was, which of course ended up being less XP per hour by about 20k, because the entire set gives the passive of sometimes being able to attack a tick faster. Another unique feature of this armor is that whenever you want to sell it, it actually has charges, which means that you're going to have to bring it to Bob here, who's going to repair it, and then you're going to be able to sell it, which is exactly what we're going to do, because I spent way too much money on these tacits, and they need to be gone immediately. 109 mil. We took a bit of a hit there, but honestly, I'm sure the guy that just got them is going to panic sell them in the next five minutes. <laughs> And I need to get rid of this as well. Overall, I think the Perilous Moon is designed incredibly well. For anyone who's looking to get into endgame content and don't have any game mechanics, I would say it's a pretty good place to start and learn. Also, if any of you guys missed yesterday's video, you probably didn't see this awesome cinematic that I had made. So click the screen and go and watch it.